Hello and welcome to Lot 49 TV. As some of you might know, Marianne Williamson will be challenging Joe Biden in the upcoming Democratic primary, and reparations to the black descendants of slavery is one of her main policies. So today I want to show you a clip of a confrontation she had with a reparations activist, Marcel Dixon, at a rally in South Carolina. I am very, I want to thank you for being, and I'm going to say this because they have to say man enough, I'm going to thank you, a woman, for being man enough to do not what's popular, not what's easy, yes. but what's right. Yes. And you're running on a reparation yes. platform. And that's the right thing to do. Now, I do want to give you some pointers if you're open to it about your reparations plan, because I face all kinds of backlash, which I gladly accept. I'm here for it. My ancestors who were fighting in these rights marches and swamps, did it back down to the backlash? I will be an insult to my great grandmother who died a hundred one if I back down because of people saying mean things to me. One, reparations comes from the federal government. It does not come from your tax dollars. America pays reparations every single day. They're paying it to the Ukrainian right now. They're paying it when they take care of people in the country illegally, adding it all to the truth. They paid it to the Japanese Americans who were interned. Even though my great grandfather helped to save the Jews from the Nazis, he came back to America and he was locked out of the GI Bill, which gave trillions of dollars to many white veterans that they say built the middle class. And yet, those same Jews right now are getting reparations. People in Guam. Wait, 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 I have to stop you. Uh, I am a Jew. What Jews right now are getting reparations? The Jews who are Holocaust survivors. Too, what? The Jews who are Holocaust survivors. But they're not getting reparations from the American government. No, they're they're not what the American government did in 2014 agree to facilitate a $12 million payback to Holocaust survivors. That had, that had nothing to do with the U.S. government. Can no, the U.S. government did facilitate that payback. That facilitation yeah. is with an administrative. Germany, okay. Germany paid reparations. Well, so to the my Jewish point is, though, but the United point, States did not pay reparations. But the United States government facilitated, and the point still, the point still exists. Me, a descendant of American slaves, haven't seen a penny yet. At the end of slavery, and I know you probably know these numbers, forty-two to eighty-four trillion dollars was the value of those of us who were enslaved. And I like the fact that you're running on reparations, but you have a trillion dollars as the amount, and that is insultingly low. And I understand that you may have to make it palatable because to the American public, but if we want to do what's right, we got to do what's right. And the, the amount that we are owed is at $70 trillion minimum. If you just do a trillion, they said in the 20th century, Black Americans lost $400 billion in just land that alone. That doesn't go to Jim Crow. That doesn't go to being left from the homestead act that gave white Americans $10 trillion and 300 acres. So I want you, I love the fact that we're on a reparations plan, but your plan is going to have to get those numbers right. It's going to be lineage based. And the money needs to go directly to us. Because when the Japanese yes. Americans got their money, it didn't go to a money. council, it went straight to them. Those Holocaust survivors, that money goes straight to them. That's right. We yeah. deserve to have yeah. even more so. Yeah. yeah, so let me say a couple of things. First of all, I honor how you stand up for your ancestors, and I stand up for mine. The United States has not paid one dollar of reparations to Jews for the Holocaust. That is number one. And by the way, as far as some of the things you said about Roosevelt, which was true about his treatment of black people, he didn't do well by the Jews during the two years when Hitler said they could still leave. So I will not stand here while anti Semitic tropes are repeated. That's so, Dixon congratulated her for running on reparations, and he thanked her for running not on what's popular, but what's right. However, he wanted to give her some pointers on her reparations plan. There are two points I want to talk about here. One, the disparity between what her plan offers and the debt owed to black Americans for slavery and everything that followed. And two, Williamson's response to Dixon bringing up reparations made to Holocaust survivors. So for the first point, he makes the comment that 42 to 84 trillion dollars was the value of those enslaved. He also states that 1 trillion of reparations is insultingly low, and that 7 trillion dollars should be the minimum. This is correct if the value owed is a minimum 7 trillion, then 1 trillion is too low and won't cut it. 
But since her 2019 presidential campaign pitched from $200 to $500 billion, a $1 trillion amount is still a big increase. However, let's look at what Williamson's own plan on her website says. Her 2024 campaign states that a minimum of $1 trillion would be paid over a 20-year period. Since this is a minimum amount, the actual sum would hopefully be higher. The money would be paid from the government to a reparations council, which would consist of 30 to 50 black leaders from across the spectrum of academia, culture, and politics. All of these would be the descendants of slaves and have some pre-existing connection to the issue of reparations. The council would determine how the money is to be dispersed with a stipulation from the government that the money be used for the purposes of economic and educational renewal. It is this stipulation that I think provoked his comment earlier in his speech that reparations money had to go straight to the descendants of slaves, in the same way as it did with reparations for Holocaust survivors and Japanese Americans that were interned during the Second World War. The direct flow of money from the government to people was also pointed out with the Homestead Act and the GI Bill, both of which helped lift up white Americans while leaving black Americans behind. But the point here is that, if you give this money to a council with the stipulation that the money only be used for economic and educational renewal, that doesn't translate into a return of the money extracted from black Americans back to them. At worst, that trillion could just be spent on slavery memorials on every street, ensuring that the struggle of black Americans is never forgotten while doing nothing to help black America catch up with white America. So her plan still needs revising. The second point I want to talk about is how she responded when Dixon brought up reparations to Holocaust survivors as an example of how reparations are made. This is an example she uses on her own campaign website. Now, I can see why, in the moment, she might have interpreted him saying that it was the American government making the reparations, something that he promptly clarified that the US government only facilitates the reparations being paid from Germany to Holocaust survivors. But at no point did he say anything that could be regarded as anti-Jewish or that would warrant such aggressive behaviour, and he never said anything against reparations for Holocaust survivors. Now, whether she wasn't really listening to what he had to say and only picked up on trigger words and concepts, which she reacted to instinctively, or whether she just really doesn't like being criticised, I leave that up to you, the audience, to decide. Well, that's it for this video. The sources used can be found in the credits and in the description. As with all YouTube channels, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe. So until next time, have a good evening.